In our number 10 spot, we have Dolce, New Mexico. In the US, there is a town by the name of Dolce, and it is in New Mexico, close to the Colorado border. This isn't just any town in the US, though. This is a town that is believed to be the home base to what is known as Dolce Base, a giant underground facility where weird experiments are done, and it is believed that advanced biological technologies were developed. Allegedly, a former government explosive engineer took part in building a secret underground base in Dolce, New Mexico in 1979. His name was Philip Schneider. According to Philip, this base is where he once came face to face with a gray, slimy alien. And there was also an underground battle where 60 people lost their life. Of course, this does feel something like out of a movie, but wouldn't that be the best perfect place to hide the truth? Let's throw the truth in movies so people think, well, that can't be possible because that's just something out of a movie. As all whistleblowers tend to do though, Philip was yet another person who supposedly took his own life. Very suspicious. In our ninth spot, we had the UK Special Demonstration Squad. This is the name of a group of undercover police officers in the UK. Now the things that they did are going to shock you. For example, they would steal birth certificates and identities of people that had died at a young age. They'd make sure that they would be around their age and then use their identities. The younger the person died, the better, because that means they didn't already live a life that they would have to cover up. And then they would go around with this new identity. Some cases they actually got into relationships with women, but the whole time they did so just to spy on them. In November of 2015, the Metropolitan Police Force apologized to seven women tricked into relationships by these officers. Like imagine that, dating someone you're madly in love with, sometimes even having a kid with them, only for them to be like, oh, sorry, gotta go, was only dating you to get intel on you and your friend circle. It's disgusting, and it's actually happened to multiple women. In our eighth spot, we have the radioactive waste. Apparently, there's a huge radioactive dumping zone located in Tonawanda, New York. In fact, they dumped more than 37 million gallons of radioactive waste from their World War II atomic bomb tests. This area has a high rate of cancer and thyroid conditions, and this is the reason why, and no one's talking about it. In our seventh spot, we have the hepatitis tests. In 1956, the US government began running tests on young individuals living at the Willowbrook State School in Staten Island. This was a state-supported institution for children with intellectual disabilities. And what they did to these students was give them hepatitis in order to track the development of the viral infection. Of course, they were being experimented on without knowledge or consent. To make matters worse, the study lasted 14 years. They also injected them with a number of drugs to see what they would do to their body and the hepatitis. Imagine intentionally making a group of people sick for an experiment. The grossest part is that when the government was exposed for this project, they tried to justify their actions by saying that these people were probably going to wind up contracting it anyways. In our sixth spot today, we have Operation Popeye. This is another very wild one. Operation Popeye was a highly classified weather modification program during the Vietnam War from 1967 to 1972. You heard me correctly. The government learned how to control the weather. Basically, they wanted to increase rainfall in certain areas to prevent enemies and military supply trucks from being able to travel. In fact, they caused a number of landslides and flooding in that area. Weather manipulation has since been banned from use for military gain. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with HIV. In the 1980s, the HIV epidemic broke out. No one knew how it spread, they just knew that it should be feared, and tons of LGBTQ plus community members were sadly contracting the virus. Well, rumor has it that HIV was a government experiment that was meant to wipe out the undesirables. Of course, the US government has denied this claim, and it's just a conspiracy we don't know for sure. But based on the other experiments done on minority groups, it's hard to know what to believe. 
In our fourth spot today, we have Project 112 and Project Shad, or S-H-A-D. Project 112 and Project Shad took place from 1962 to 1973 and involved a number of veterans or military personnel. Basically, both tests involved exposing these people to substances they might want to use in warfare. Nearly 6,000 people were exposed to Coxiella burnetti, which is Q fever, Staphylococco enterotoxin B, which causes food poisoning, and sarin and somin gas. Sarin is a very, very dangerous nerve gas, and somin can cause death in minutes. Both can be fatal if only the tiniest amount gets on the skin. These men had no clue that they were being exposed to this. Moving on to number three, we have Project Sunshine. This is another very messed up government project. During the 1950s, the US government was using stillborns to conduct radiation tests on. They wanted to determine the effects that radiation would have on humans and how much we could withstand in case of a nuclear fallout. They called this Project Sunshine, and it was anything but rainbows and sunshine. What's sad is that the government was stealing body parts and tissues from morgues without families' consent. It said that more than 1,500 samples were gathered worldwide. This is incredibly sad and sick. Coming in at number two, we have the syphilis experiments. In 1932, the US Public Health Service created an experiment to see the health effects of untreated syphilis. But the test subjects were told that they were receiving free treatment to cure their syphilis. And that was a lie. Instead of giving the men the recommended penicillin treatment, they gave them placebos, like aspirin. Sadly, 28 men died of syphilis because of these experiments, 100 more passed away from syphilis-related complications, and 40 spouses contracted this disease. And 19 women who gave birth passed on syphilis to their newborn children. In 1997, Bill Clinton apologized to the survivors and their families on behalf of the government. And he admitted that the tests were, and I quote, profoundly and morally wrong. And in our number one spot today, we have the radiation tests. In 1953, a number of tests were done on pregnant women to see the effects that radioactive iodine would have on them and their newborns. These studies were terrible. In one study, researchers gave these women doses of iodine-131. Sadly, they all miscarried. When they did, they continued to study the women's aborted embryos. Another study took place after World War II. 829 pregnant mothers in Tennessee were given vitamin drinks. They were informed that these drinks would improve their health and their babies, but it actually contained radioactive iron and the researchers wanted to see how fast the radioisotopes crossed into the placenta. Several of the young passed away from these experiments. Four died from cancers as a result of the experiments, and the women experienced rashes, bruises, anemia, hair and tooth loss, and cancer as well. Meanwhile, they just wanted the best for their babies and thought that this drink was going to help them not kill them. Kicking off the list at number 10, nuclear site list. Here on Most Amazing, we love lists. I'm not sure if you can tell, but apparently the US government also fancies a list or two. Back when Obama was still running the show, a report was delivered to Congress. Well, it was supposed to be. The 266 page report featured every nook and cranny about the US nuclear program, and it was released publicly on the government printing office's website and draft forum by accident. Yeah, just a casual PDF that shows us literal maps to stockpiled fuel used for nuclear warheads back in the day. We love those. The only PDFs I actually enjoy are those ones, actually. Does this stuff happen often? How does this happen? I thought this type of stuff could never happen, right? Well, MIT professor John M. Dutch said these screw-ups do happen, and it doesn't look like a serious breach. I mean, it certainly sounds serious, but okay, we'll trust the government. Thank you, sir. Let's do it. In our number nine spot, we have Mount Weather, Virginia. Apparently there is a secret city or military base located in a mountain in Virginia. Mount Weather is located just 74 kilometers from Washington, DC. This is a place that is sort of an emergency operations center in case there's a war or an apocalypse, for example. Apparently though, it is used to house all the highest levels of government officials if there were to ever be an emergency and they needed to be in a safe place. 
It also protects some national treasures, just like the movie National Treasure. It was built in the Cold War era and it's a fully functional city equipped with hospitals, cafeterias, a train station, to name a few. Well, if an apocalypse does happen, at least we can rest easy knowing our government officials have used our tax dollars to keep themselves safe. Am I right or am I right or am I right? In our number eight spot, we have Fort Knox. Believed to be one of the most secure places in the world, Fort Knox is apparently a military base that is located in Kentucky. Honestly though, I really don't think it is the most secure place. I bet you Area 51 is more secure, but whatever. Area 51 doesn't even show up on Google World, so that's top security for ya. Anyways, people believe this place to be another holding area for treasures, but this one is allegedly the place where the Holy Grail is said to be. Huh, that's a crazy rumor that I wish could be proven true. Apparently also 2% of the world's metals are stored there, but alas, I bet we the little people may never know as walls are made of concrete, so ain't no burglar ever getting in and making it out alive anytime soon. In our number seven spot, we have the American NSA spy hubs. For any non-Americans watching, I bet you that your own country also has a spy hub and is doing the same thing, but yeah, this one is about the American spy hubs. So don't just think it's an American thing. Apparently in the US there are windowless skyscrapers and those are believed to be the NSA hubs. You think they're watching your every move and keeping a tab on you? Yeah, they probably are. Especially if you're someone that might have the ability to be heard by many. If you don't, then meh, I wouldn't worry about it. You're not a threat. Apparently these buildings are restricted and heavily secretive and are built to withstand terrorist attacks, which is super interesting to think about because what does that even mean? Are they made of some kind of metal that can't explode? Like, huh? I don't know. Apparently these states have confirmed NSA hubs. Atlanta, Dallas, Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York City. In our number six spot, we have Diego Garcia. Okay, so this one is fascinating to me. Diego Garcia is a British island that apparently is owned by the US, and it is where they allegedly keep a secret underwater base. Apparently it is one of the most strategically located places for the US military. Allegedly it is a place where there is a top secret CIA prison where terrorist suspects are interrogated. In 2007 the Pentagon aka the government granted a 32 million dollar contract to add a submarine base to the dock. So really that's all you need to know what they are keeping in that submarine, probably the creatures of Atlantis and secretive documents of course. Apparently so many of the original settlers, ancestors from the island were kicked off long ago and have tried to sue to get their land back, but they of course been unsuccessful. Which honestly, one of the world's most powerful governments has taken over, so no wonder it's a lost cause. In our number five spot we have the Marshall Island. The Marshall Islands are another island that is owned by the US. It became quite occupied by the US in World War II. The Marshall Islands eventually became a sort of testing grounds for nuclear testing between 1946 to 1962. Apparently during this time the US conducted 67 nuclear tests. The repercussions of such testing were of course quite high. The remaining radiation on the island has been the reason that most of the original settlers have never returned even though they are allowed to at this point in time. Oh yeah, now that we've destroyed your island, here you go, you can have it back. Apparently there are high levels of radiation in all of the crops as you can probably imagine after 67 nuclear tests and so that is not suitable for anyone to make a home there and live comfortably. Apparently Bob Hope the comedian was once quoted talking about the island and he said we located the one spot on earth that hadn't been touched by the war and blew it to hell. Yep that sounds like humans to me. In our number four spot we have the Menwith Hill Royal Air Force Station in the UK. This is a Royal Air Force base located in the United Kingdom, but don't let that confuse you, it's actually leased to the US. So this is really a US military base. 
aka a US spy hub. It was formed around 1954 when the British War Office purchased 550 acres of land and leased it to the US military. Apparently everything that is done there is of course top secret naturally and it was originally set up to help with the Cold War. People believe that they are spying on communications being done in Europe and Asia. Whatever goes on there though remains extremely restricted despite the large amount of protests that the locals have done over the years. What's interesting about this space is that it looks like a bunch of enlarged golf balls, which makes it a sight that you cannot miss. In our number three spot, we have North Brother Island. This is an island off the coast of New York that was originally purchased with the intention of turning it into a hospital. It became Riverside Hospital and it became a place for people who had very contagious diseases, uh, such as tuberculosis, yellow fever, smallpox, to name a few. It eventually became a quarantine place for military veterans until it became a rehab for heroin addicts. Yeah, after the doctors stopped prescribing it, the least they could do was offer a rehab center. Today the island is actually forbidden to visit. Apparently it was the inspiration behind Leo DiCaprio's movie Shutter Island, and there is a lot of speculation around the mysteriousness of the island. Is this another secret base that we don't know about? Who knows? In our number two spot, we have Robbins Island. Robbins Island is another island located off the coast of New York, and it is also forbidden to the public. It is a very restricted area that was once the place for many business owners and powerful leaders to go to for many years. Tales of successful and failed business ventures circle the island, as well as pictures of presidents Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon, whom were once there. Now the island is owned by Mr. Louis Bacon, who keeps it as a nature reserve and sanctuary, so it is still not open to the public. I bet you there are still powerful business meetings still done on the island, we just don't have any up to date photo proof yet. There's probably some kind of Illuminati cult base there I bet. In our number one spot we have the closed city of Mercury, Nevada, USA. Some people don't know this, but there have been a lot of cities that have been restricted to the public over the last couple hundred years. One of them that is still very restricted to the public is Mercury, Nevada. Nevada in the US. This is a city that was thriving in the 50s with a population of 10,000, having all the normal amenities, you know, schools, hospitals, restaurants, etc. But eventually, it became the home to a bunch of scientists and then eventually became restricted to approximately 500 people who are mainly researchers. It is still very heavily restricted and you need government clearance in order to enter. Maybe that's because it is so close to Area 51 and it it is within the phenomena of the Nevada Triangle where strange occurrences happen. People vanish without a trace or disappear and reappear in a spot they weren't before. Sightings of aliens have also been reported. So perhaps maybe it's best that you can't go to Mercury. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe some of the aliens live there and that wouldn't be pleasant to see. But whatever is going on there, it is highly secretive and I doubt will ever be filled in, at least not anytime soon. Starting off this countdown, we have the Weipholm Experiments. This was a series of experiments in Sweden from 1945 to 1955. It's literally going to make you sick to your stomach when you find out what they did. Basically, they force-fed people with mental illness sweets to see if sugar was related to tooth decay. Imagine people just cramming food down your throat against your will. It's very gross. These experiments were conducted by the government and sponsored by the sugar industry. The experiments lasted for about two years, and by then, the teeth of about 50 of the subjects in the experiment had been completely ruined. Number nine, climate gate. Yeah, we had a smooth one off the bat, now we're getting right into the serious stuff. Climate stuff. <laughs> climate change and stuff. A little different sounding than Watergate, but we'll get to that one later on, obviously. Climate gate, this was back in 2009 when some hackers some hackers released thousands of emails and files all from the climate research unit in the UK. These documents, okay, hold on to your butts for this one, they show scientists suppressing the publication of research going against global warming. So this sparked a bunch of bad ideas because at that point in 2009, we just believed it. We just stopped listening at all. Climate change critics were like, aha, I knew it. It was all a conspiracy this whole time. The CRU responded and said the emails were out of context and that the planet is indeed heating up and we're still in fact 
burning towards our demise. But these docs leaked literally weeks before the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Denmark. So peculiar timing, I'd say. Science fired back pretty quick. Scientists all around the world were actively proving at that point that humans actively are causing global warming. Today we're uh, scrambling a bit more to figure this one out than 2009. Yeah. A few more of you believe this time around. Number eight, God Save the Queen. This one's quite grim, but I have to talk about it. Have you ever wondered what happens, what will happen after the Queen passes away? I mean, I know it's the last thing we want to think about right now because, uh, dark, obviously, but it's hard not to think of, especially when Politico magazine releases Operation London Bridge to the public. Yeah, what is that? This magazine somehow got documents showing each and every step in detail what'll happen when that fateful day arrives. There'll be phone calls to the Prime Minister, of course, would be first. Customs require that the Prime Minister is informed by the monarch's private security. Flags will fly at half-mast, of course, but oddly enough, in this document, the Queen's death is referred to as D-Day. Yeah, nine days of protocols will follow afterwards, and after a service at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, that's when Queen Elizabeth will be buried with King George VI. It's dark, but I mean, imagine reading about this one morning in 2021. What an odd article. What a, what a brutal way to wake up. Number seven, secret PowerPoint. Yeah, nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation, but I'll do my best. Here we go. When it comes to the NSA, odds are this PowerPoint is going to be pretty juicy, right? This slideshow was often used to train US intelligence, and I gotta say, 41 pages? That's it. I did 45 on Medieval Knights in high school. That's all I'm saying, step your game up. This program was called PRISM. You probably heard about this, this is a big deal. And it cost about $20 million a year. This was the highlight of the Snowden leak. PRISM kicked off back in 2007. See, originally they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple come 2012, that's when things got a little dicey as most things are with Apple. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants. Google, Skype, YouTube even, so I don't know, search history, you may wanna delete that stuff. There was a summit in California, which originally was tense. The United States was accusing China of cyber attack, but right after Edward Snowden leaked the prism tea, they didn't have much power at said summit. So China and Europe citizens were obviously not too pleased here. Yeah, leaked data, we don't, we don't like hearing about that. There's a, this one gets a little worse. Number six. Big Brother is watching. Even allies of the United States are not safe here, okay? Thanks to Snowden, our boy again, gotta mention him a couple times in this list. At the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of eyes, a lot of spies. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of dudes. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Ah, oh, brutal. She said the F word too. It's like, hey, we were friends, pal. Don't go through my phone. Don't swipe left in the photos, okay? Betrayal. Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone, like regular phone calls in Spain for the average folks. So if you thought you were off the hook, you're not, literally and figuratively. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys, maybe. You know, save some tea for in person. You don't want to give up all that good stuff on the phone. Number five, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, personal information from 191 million voters was leaked to the public online. Yeah, this feels like yesterday. I remember this all unfolding. I was like, what? How? Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. See, Forbes had described Vickery as, dare I say, a good hacker. They're what's referred to as these white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploding them, you know? Unlike Snowden or other people. That's the key, that's the Donnie difference. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims here, so it was a big one. All their names, addresses, birth dates, phone numbers, emails, you name it, things you don't want other people knowing, let alone third parties, were all out there. If you could vote, you were exposed. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak. CSO Online and databreaches.net suggest that the information more than likely came from software provider Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gillum announced that that was not the case and they did not create the database. Although he conceded that it is possible that some of the information that it contains may have come from the data we make available for free to campaigns. He's like, no, we didn't do it, but maybe we did. <laughs> it's like, okay. So a third party took what they could and really ran with it. That's terrifying. Time to change your email again. Number four, psychoelectronic weapons. Yeah, this sounds like something Iron Man uses. It doesn't sound too chill now, does it? Psychoelectronic weapons. The first time Curtis Waltman heard of these uh, was by accident, as you could have guessed. He was receiving documents via Yahoo and they were not what he expected. See, originally he had filed a Freedom of Information Act request to Washington State Fusion Center. See, he was trying to find out more on the clashes between Antifa and the far right, but he got a response and it was all about experimental weapons. Guy gets a zip file back in return called EM effects on human body. He's like, Big Shiny Tune 6? He's like, what? I didn't ask for this. Way too many viruses in that one. 
Big Shiny Tune 7, I think, was a good one. That's a good one. In this document, he saw diagrams on these weapons and the effects that they have on people. There's muscle quaking, all body pain. One of the effects allowed users to control their dreams. Is this a weapon? This is this is pretty remarkable. This was clearly sent by mistake. Ah, the only emails I get are student loans, and those ones are not by mistake. Those ones are definitely on purpose. They're like, Mr. Taylor, I'm like, oh, oh God, they found me. Number three, quantum computer. Uh, this next one's pretty eye-opening, here we go. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are also getting way too good. I've fallen for way too many fake trailers. I thought they were doing a Back to the Future reboot with Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. for like four days, all fake, whole thing's fake. But thanks to our man Snowden, the OG secret revealer, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. Yeah, how fun must that one be? I wonder if it can run Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 without getting hot. No computer can do that. It's called the Quantum Computer, and it costs about 80 million to create this program. This computer is safely stored in a massive room sized metal box, not intimidating at all. It's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. So it can break encryptions for just about anything finance records, medical, your old MSN, hopefully, maybe, probably, definitely not. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This Quantum Computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes years. This supercomputer they're working on can break through a lot faster. You can get through in days, even hours. So you better clear that search history now while you still can. Thanks for the hot tip, Snowden. I was gonna switch to PC gaming, but you know what? I'll wait it out. I'll wait till this new one comes out. It looks a little faster. Number two, WikiLeaks Warlogs. Companies have to be somewhere, right? We're in a film studio in Toronto. We go to a certain place. We leave said certain place in a said certain area. Right? Where do places like WikiLeaks live? How do they stay secure? Well, in Stockholm, apparently, buried under 100 feet below street level in an old nuclear bunker. That's where right next to Pirate Bay. They're neighbors, actually. They knock on the cement walls. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banoff. Now, this is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks, but Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker behind a two-foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators, so he's secure. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published Army Field reports from 2004 to 2009. Now, it's one of the biggest leaks in US history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraq war out of the 109,000 confirmed in total. That's horrible. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics afterwards. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009. One of the biggest leaks in US history, no doubt about it. And finally, number one, Watergate. Yeah, it's not an internet leak, but it's too good to talk about. This is OG, come on. We have to finish on Watergate. In the middle of 1972, there were five men who were all arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, DC. Now, it was pretty obvious they intended on bugging the place. They looked like spy kids. They had all the gears. They were, you know, it was fishy. As the year went on, the election came closer and closer, and then all of a sudden, out of the woodwork comes this anonymous source who fed information to Washington Post reporters that apparently the Watergate bugging incident was a massive campaign of political spying and sabotage kicked off by none other than President Nixon himself. Yeah, he was trying to get that re-election. Now, despite this information leak and it being reported in the news and all that good stuff, Nixon was still re-elected, even though he was involved in this entire scandal. These men were clearly linked to a fundraising group for Nixon, but his administration just kept denying any involvement. It wasn't until a year later in 1972 when reporters Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, they also came forward and exposed more stuff. Yeah, they exposed the administration's role in this entire scandal and they had an inside source, an FBI agent named Mark Feltz, and this ultimately led to Nixon resigning later in 1974, the first president to do so. Mm -hmm.